Good day, Virtual Pilots. I'm going to be showing you a new technique um, in order to learn these aircraft. Uh, it's based on two new terms called a trigger and a flow. A trigger is an event which causes you to perform a flow, and a flow is the sequence of actions you perform in the cockpit for a particular phase of flight. I've created flows for the F5 as well as other DCS aircraft from startup to shutdown, and the purpose of these is so you can um, learn the cockpit layout faster, perform your actions in a logical order, as well as reduce your checklist reliance. Your checklist and flows will work together because the checklists are going to verify that your flows have been performed correctly, which will help you fly the aircraft more efficiently. This will also be useful in a multi career aircraft. This picture is going to be the basis of all the flows I have in my PDF, and there's also a large version which can be printed off as a wall poster if you wanted to. The download links from the video description, and uh, there's also a kneeboard version if you wanted that as well. With the logic of these, the idea is that we overlay various procedures onto the cockpit and this is going to create the workflow. The first workflow we're going to look at is called the before engine start. So how do you go about learning a flow? You'll learn a flow with repetition by sitting in your chair with your eyes closed and you visualize the flow as it moves around the cockpit while reaching out for where the switches are as you move through it. This is known as chair flying. The big benefit that comes to chair flying is it helps you learn these procedures faster because you're not just relying on the reading element, you're also incorporating a visual element and a kind of aesthetic element because you're reaching out to touch the switches. I've zoomed in on the flow here to make it easier to see for the video, but you can follow through on the PDF if you like. To begin, we'll turn the fuel boost pumps left and right both to on and turn the battery master on and check that the auxiliary intake doors show closed. Then turn the generators on, the oxygen system will set that, so we turn the supply lever on, and there's a looter lever to normal, and emergency lever to normal. IFF, get that to standby, internal lights as required, turn the beacon on, formation exterior nav lights as required, and then we go to outside, so we're going to connect the external power, put in the wheel chocks, and connect the external air to prepare for the engine start. That was quite a mouthful, but uh, we'll go inside the cockpit now, we'll run through the flow. Alright, so now we're in the cockpit of the F5, and we're going to have a look at the before engine start flow. So I'm just going to zoom it in a little bit. And I'm going to bring up that zoomed in version of that before start flow, so you can follow along. So we start by turning the fuel boost pumps left and right to the on position. Get the battery switch on, check the auxiliary intake doors close. Turn the generators on, and we set our oxygen, so we get the oxygen flow lever to on and then both the other switches to normal. Get the IFF to standby for now. And then we don't need internal lights because it's daytime, but we can get the formation exterior nav lights on and turn the beacon on. Let me turn the master caution light off because that's associated with turning the airplane on. Then we'll press backslash and bring up the comm menu to connect the external power. Chief, turn on the ground power. Copy. power is now on. Then we can request now to put the wheel chocks in. Chief, place the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now in place. And lastly, we'll connect external air. Chief, connect ground air supply. Copy. Ground air supply is now connected. So I'm going to put in a frequency manually here to talk to the traffic control and request an engine start. So the F10 map will tell you that frequency for the airfield you're at, and you can set it to main or both. So for your reference, um, here's the left engine start flow, and the trigger for this flow is going to be when you're clear to start your engines. Now we're going to jump back into the cockpit, and we'll go through the left engine start. So to talk to air traffic control, I need to use the radio, so I'll use the UHF radio button to do so, and I'll request the engine start. So there's our trigger that will let us start the engines. And then we'll call for an air supply from ground. Then we'll watch the left tachometer. Chief, apply ground air supply. Copy. Air is now applied. 
Once the RPM gets above 10%, we'll press the left engine push start button. Then bring the left throttle to idle. This will get the engine start sequence going. The EGT starts rising a lot, which is fine. And what ends up happening is as the RPM approaches 50%, then the engine will stabilize and the EGT will drop and the nozzle position will increase. So these instruments are good. We'll check that the left generator light is out. The doors are showing barber pole and the hydraulic pressure is good. So now with the left engine started, we're going to do a cross bleed start. Now this doesn't require any external air or power because we're going to be utilizing the plane's own power and the air supplied by the left engine. So the first step in the cross bleed start is to disconnect the external air and power using the comm menu. Chief, disconnect ground air supply. Copy. Ground air supply is now disconnected. Chief, turn off the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now off. So now that both of those are disconnected, we're going to do the cross bleed. So in order to get enough air going, we need to increase the left throttle to bring the RPM up to just over 95%. So we can start increasing the left throttle. It's nice and smooth. And once it's above 95%, we'll let it stabilize there. And then we'll press the right engine start push button. It's going to be on that left hand side of the cockpit. So we press that. And we're monitoring the right engine's RPM. Once it gets above 10%, we can then bring the right throttle out of the shutoff to idle. This will get the engine start process going. And it's just like with the left engine, the EGT will rise a lot. The nozzle position will stay somewhere around the middle. And then as the RPM approaches 50%, the EGT is going to drop off and the nozzle position will increase. So with normal engine instruments, we can bring the left engine back to idle. And then we can check that the right generator is out, which it is. The door will show open and the hydraulic pressure is good. So now that both the engines are started, this is going to be the trigger to do the after start flow. This is getting you ready um, just before you start taxiing. So you're going to set up a few different things on the airplane before you start moving. Okay, so now both engines have started. We're going to go through the after start flow. Now beginning in the lower left, we're going to put the radar in the standby position. This will get it warmed up so it's ready to go when we reach the runway. And we're going to retract the speed brake because it's extended at the end of every flight. Flap thumb switch, we're going to bring that to the automatic position. Then we're going to turn the yaw and pitch dampers on. And then we'll check the pitch damper disconnect on the control stick. We hit that. It'll disconnect automatically, so we can reconnect that now. And then we do the flight control check. So full left stick to bring left aileron up. Now we can put the right aileron down. And full right stick for right aileron up. And left aileron down. And then full back stick and full forward stick, checking the deflection there. And we check rudder movement. And you would check the rudder itself if you could see it. So now we're going to set the tack hand. The tuned frequency for here is going to be 12 X-ray. So we set that and set it to the transmit receive. We'll go through the process of tuning. And while it's doing that, we can go through the rest of the instruments. Uh, the radio is set correctly for the tower here. So now we can go to the standby attitude indicator and uncage that. So now for the altimeter. For this mission, I set the pressure to be 29095. So we can use the mouse wheel and scroll through and set the altimeter to 2995. And then we're going to verify um, that our altimeter is going to be correct. So from here we look and see our altitude says about 1780. And when we switch to the electric, we want to see that it's within 75 feet, which it is. So that's fine. But now we go to the airspeed index, planning on climbing out of 300 knots. So we can just either use the mouse wheel or... Click and drag and we'll bring that up to 300 knots. Next we're going to set the pitch trim, which is a little circle up there. Here I've created the chart here which tells you uh, your pitch trim. 
that we're going to need. So in this, a configuration is going to be uh, the one highlighted there. So our piston trim is going to be plus 8. So using the piston trim, I hold it back and set it for plus 8. And I'm going to keep in mind this is going to give us a rotation speed of 158 knots. Now we're going to check the uh, HSI. We've given enough time for the tack end to do its thing and we can see that it's properly tuned now. So we're going to set the course knob so the needle's in the middle and we have a two flag pointing to the station. Now we're going to do full deflection to the left and to the right just to verify that that's working correctly. And then I'm going to set um, the needle to be pointed towards the runway direction which is going to be around 030. And I'm also using the heading bug and setting that to 030 as well. And I'm just going to turn down the volume on the tack end so I don't have to keep hearing the Morse code identifier. And we can request the wheel chock removal. That's going to bring us to our next flow. Chief, remove the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. So we can see here's the taxi flow, and the trigger for this is going to be the wheel chocks being removed. Alright, so the wheel chocks removed, we're going to go over the taxi flow. So we engage the nerves with steering on the control stick and hold it. Then we do full pedal deflection, left and right, and we hold it for 5 seconds each time. This is going to generate the maximum amount of torque on the nose wheel steering system, and then we'll verify this is still working when we uh, begin taxiing. So now we're going to have a look at the flight instruments. VSI is 0, standby attitude indicator is level, altimeter is checked and set, airspeed is set, attitude indicator is level, HSI has got the runway heading set and bugged. Now we can turn on the radar warning receiver and uh, we come down to the lower right now. The IFF, SIF control, you don't really get a score here so we're just going to chuck in a VFR score for the hell of it. Let me put it onto normal. So from here we can now request a taxi from ATC. That way we'll get our taxi instructions and we can look at the taxi diagram in more detail. All airports will have an airport diagram and these will let you determine where you are and so when you're given instructions where you traffic control you can figure out how to get where you want to be. So for this example we we're told to go to runway 3 left so we're going to take a left on taxiway Golf then we'll make a right turn on taxiway Alpha and across runway 3 right then we're going to hold short of runway 3 left and from there we'll do the before takeoff flow. Alright, so we've been given our instructions and we're going to complete the taxi towards the runway. So we're going to add a little bit of power, get ourselves rolling. As we start rolling, we're just going to use the wheel brakes just to verify they're working. So that's fine. You can bring up the power again and start moving. And on the way out, hold down that nose wheel steering button. Just go to the left and to the right just to verify that you do have that set correctly. Because if you don't have this button set up, then that's going to make taxiing pretty difficult for you. You'll have to rely on the brakes, and uh, making a sharp turn such as what we're coming up to here would be uh, pretty hard to do. So as you're coming up to the turn here, keep that nose steering button engaged. Then just start applying uh, left rudder. This is going to bring us around by engaging the nose wheel. Now if you're having trouble with the sensitivity of the nose wheel steering, you can add a rudder curve of between 20 and 30 percent. This will help you make more fine control adjustments. Now I'll move forward in time a little bit towards where runway 3 left is and we'll look at the before takeoff flow. Right, so as we're approaching runway 3 left, this little hold area is our, known as the end of runway area and there's multiple um, diagonal taxi lines here which is where the different fight aircraft would line up. Um, and since I'm the only one here, I'd line up on the diagonal closest to the runway. This is where the maintenance guys will do their final check before you go take off. Now I'm just going to pull in here, get myself lined up, and then um, we'll come to a stop. And uh, from here we'll look at our before takeoff flow.
All right, so we can see here for the before takeoff flow, the trigger is going to be when you're approaching the runway. So now we can get the aircraft ready for takeoff. There's only a few things left we have to do. So we're going to get the countermeasures. You can set those up however you like. I'm just going to put the chaff onto the single. Radar mode will be operational. Radar range is set. We're going to extend or hike the nose strut. This is going to help shorten our takeoff roll. HSI is set up, so the CDI and the heading bug are on runway heading. Let's turn the pitter heat on. We don't need the engine any ice on here. And close the canopy. Verify the caution and warning lights are all out. And our exterior lights are also set up. Now we can request our takeoff. Springfield 1-1, one, one. request takeoff. We can start adding power. And verify uh, by checking the final approach, make sure no one's coming into land. That way we don't cause any problems while we're trying to take off. Now as we're following the line here, you can either continue following it around to the right, or you can continue straight and then make a sharper turn to the right. This will help maximize your takeoff distance, so that's what I'm going to do now. And then we want to verify we're on the correct runway by seeing uh, three left there on the pavement. The proper takeoff clearance will come in a moment. Springfield 1 1. You are cleared for takeoff and ready. Climb 300 at QFE 28.05. So now we have permission for takeoff. We're going to hold down the brakes. Then we're going to increase our power to the military setting, which is 100% RPM. We're going to hold it there for a few seconds, make sure the engine instruments are all within limits. Then we can release the wheel brakes. And start rolling. Engaging the nose steering up until around 65 knots. We're going to start rolling as we push the throttle forward into afterburner. Using the rudder to keep ourselves aligned with the center line. And once we reach 158 knots, we'll apply back pressure and rotate. Once we get a positive rate of climb, we can bring the landing gear up and start accelerating. As we pass through 200 knots, we can bring the flaps to the up position if you like. And as we start accelerating through 250 knots, we check that the auxiliary intake doors are closed. And uh, because you had such a high nose up trim during the takeoff, you're going to need to add nose down trim um, as you start accelerating to 300 knots. And uh, since we're reaching 300 knots now, we can pull ourselves out of afterburner around into the military power setting. So we can see the EGT and the nozzle position will adjust as we come out of afterburner. So we can maintain 300 knots and then as we're coming through 5000 here, we're going to make a turn uh, just off to the north. And if you like, you can use the HSI to bug the heading. I'm just rather fly the airplane at the moment. And uh, since we are on our initial climb to altitude, that's going to be the trigger for the climb flow. So we checked that the oxygen is set to normal, and the external fuel, since we are running an external tank, uh, we want to check that that's done, so we're going to select that up there, and the left side is low, so we set that accordingly. And the cockpit pressurization is fine. And um, if you were going to climb above flight over 180, then you would set your altimeter up to 2992. I hope you've learned something with this new concept about flows. Uh, I'm going to continue this with the next F5 video, as well as other DCS aircraft if you guys like this new format. I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. I really appreciate your support and the fact that you've been giving me some good feedback and thoughts about this content. It has helped me improve and tailor it to what you guys want to see. Till next time though, remember to fly safe and check your six.